Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm Tyler Wysong. You know, pursuing the path of becoming a better singer, I think is really the definition of a hero's journey. You are almost guaranteed to be met with many obstacles, trials, and tribulations along your journey. But hey, if you didn't have those things, I guess it wouldn't be much of an adventure. What's most important, though, is when you are met with these challenges, um, and for singing, that could be, I can't hit that note, or I'm feeling strained, I have a break in my voice. I mean, there's, there's endless possibilities here. But what's most important along this hero's journey is that you have tools and the right tools at your disposal so that those obstacles don't stop you. They don't stop you from becoming the singer that you're meant to be and that you're meant to become. So today I want to give you a tool that will hopefully help you and uh, bring revelation and help you continue pursuing down the path of greatness. So today what I want to talk about is just a little bit of sensation sorting. Um, and really, I just want to keep this very simple. It's the idea as you start to sing up your range of allowing your voice to go up vertically in your head, behind your eyes somewhere, as opposed to trying to shove it out this way. And I want to give you a couple ideas so that way you can make it very clear that you're headed in the right direction. I think one of the best ways to start becoming aware of this placement sensation is using Ken Bozeman's whisper exercise. So for example, if you first of all just whisper normally and just say, hey, how's it going? And then say, yo, 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 it feels very mouthy and out this way. Um, but if you gave me kind of a like, yeah, like kind of affect like that, yo, we're using affect to change the placement and to change the tuning of your vocal track. All of a sudden, that's in a different place. Yo, yo. That one feels very concentrated, but and it feels high up in my head. So the thing is, when you go for this, you know, Ken, Ken calls it chiaroscuro, whisper, a balance of bright and dark whisper. Um, it shouldn't be like this, like open hollow in in here it's it's very concentrated um and it feels high up in the head in the middle of the head somewhere that right there as simple as that might seem that is not too far off from the sensation of mixed voice yo yo right there i'm going i'm just going throughout my range very, very easily. I'm not trying my best not to change that shape and I'm allowing the affect to stabilize things. And that's very, very important because the affect can be a really amazing organizing principle. Instead of thinking, what is my larynx doing? What are my lips doing? You know, what is my soft palate, my tongue doing? Like that is too many things to think about when you're singing. It's okay to learn about those things, absolutely. And it's okay to play around with them and figure out what's going on. But when you're actually singing, you can't think about all those things. You need to have, at least I don't think, um, I haven't had much success thinking like that. Um, you need to have an organizing principle, like say one thing you think about that helps to micromanage, if you will, all of these things. And that's what affect does. So you can do that on all vowels. You, you can uh, experiment with, you know, say, yeah, which is normal. But if I say, yeah, and there's other affects, right? Like, um, uh, like a warm, warm hearted, empathetic, yeah, like I'm, so, oh man, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you know, you can put it on a scale, you can you can just migrate up and down. But the point is that that voice is traveling very easily up into the head. Now, I should mention, especially for, you know, like popular styles of singing, which is like what I sing, um, like rock and roll music, pop music, country, whatever. Um, you know, we a lot of times are not going 
for this, we are not going for the same kind of depth as, uh, say, a, a good classical singer would be going for. So there is very much so a temptation in popular styles of singing to focus, yeah, like too much like that, and we lose, we start to hike the larynx up by thinking up. So it is important to to allow the voice to go up but there is something that stabilizes downward and into the body now one it's going to be based on comfort but also it's going to be genre specific too so you learn these shapings but then you may have to modify them ever so slightly uh which totally cool to get the sound that you're going for so that you sound authentic in the style of music that you're singing so for example i know an e vowel And this is all based on Ken Bozeman's work. Yes, I've read his books, but I also have the good fortune of being able to work with him, of being able to study with him too. So some of this is stuff that I've read from him, but a lot of it is also just things him and I have worked on in our lessons. So I know this E, if I do the whisper thing, is going to be about on this pitch up here, which is a B6. So I don't want to go like this. Because then I'm shoving everything forward. But what if I think of like a that kind of a empathetic, I feel kind of badly about something. Okay, so there's my shape. What if I just add sound to it? Now, regardless of what that sounds like, because I'm not singing anything yet, I'm just making a vowel sound. Watch what happens when I go up the octave. Easy come, easy go. That's just how you live. Oh, take, take, take it all, but you never give. Should have known you was trouble from the first kiss. Had your eyes wide open. Why were they open? Gave you all I had, and you talk, sit in the trash. Sit in the trash as you did. So I'm using, you know, these ideas, these tools, if you will, to help get me in the right place to sing this song, which is a challenging song, simply because of where it sits the whole time. And then, of course, the chorus is just crazy to it. The lowest note in the song, I think, is like. A below middle C. So, I mean, you're just living up there. And for my voice type, especially, if I'm going to live up there, I cannot be shouting out this way. Like, that is going to kill me. But if I can find a way to comfortably let my voice float up here, mainly by use of affect and these vowel tunings, just playing around with these things to give my voice to pop up into my head, and just know that when it's there, it's right. And it feels comfortable too. Like I don't feel like I have to overpressurize, but I also feel like I can sing into it. Um, I feel like I have dynamics there. I mean, then there you go. Then you're back on the trail, if you will, and you're back headed in the right direction, like I said, on the hero's journey. So I just recently I heard something from Tim Ferriss that I just thought was so amazing I just wanted to share with you. He was talking about Dean Martin and Mike Tyson. Uh, Dean Martin, of course, was part of like the Rat Pack, you know, with Frank Sinatra and whatnot. And at the time, he was known as, I mean, probably one of the greatest, or at least one of the most famous singers um, in the world. And he vomited before every performance. He was so afraid to get out there and sing. Mike Tyson, similar thing. Um, You know, Mike Tyson, the boxer, he's going to rip your head off. He's back before the match started. Same thing, throwing up. He was scared. They, They felt fear. And what Tim Ferriss was saying was if guys like Dean Martin and Mike Tyson, people at the top of their top of their game, world class at what they do, are not immune to fear, then why would we be immune to fear? 
And also, we have to understand, and this is based off of Stoic philosophy, the hero and the coward feel the same fear, but the hero does something different. I want to encourage you to keep being the hero. It's okay to feel fear. It's okay to feel anxiety before a performance, but choose to be the hero. Do something different. Continue to be open to receiving greatness in everything that you do. All right, y'all, I hope you liked that video today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, hit subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified when I release more videos just like this one. Until next time.